Our story continues from last week, and so I invite you to look again with me at the fourth chapter of the gospel according to Luke, where Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth this day and the reflections of all of our hearts, draw us closer to you. May they be pleasing to you, our Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our light. Amen. Several months ago, I discovered a new word, which has become my favorite word. The word is liberosis. And liberosis is the desire to care less about things. It means to loosen up your your grip on life, to, to stop glancing behind you every few steps, afraid that someone will snatch from you whatever you have and and before you reach your destination, wherever that is. It's about holding your life loosely, playfully, kind of like a, a volleyball, keeping it in play, with only quick, fleeting interventions, bouncing freely, always in play. Liberosis is largely about a longing for freedom, an ache to let things go, to release them. And we hear it all the time, don't we? Just just let it go. Just let it go. It's easier, though, to encourage someone else to let it go than it is to let go of of whatever kind of stress or fear or anxiety or or burden you're hanging on to in your own life. And why do we hold on so tightly in the first place? Maybe because we think we have to change the circumstances. Instead of letting go, though, we, we let these things hold us down. And we get wound up so tightly that we can lose sleep and we worry and we become these these balls of stress and anxiety and our blood pressure rises. In fact, I read this week as part of a a new study published in the Journal of Psychophysiology, 120 undergraduate students who were all in committed relationships were split into three groups. And all the students put their feet into ice water for four minutes. But in group one, the participants... Partners were present with them. And in group two, they were told to 
to simply think about their partner. And in group three, they were told to just reflect on their day. Well, researchers found the blood pressure of participants in the first two groups was lower than those who were told to just think about their day. And the participants whose partners were in the room with them also reported that they were in less physical pain. So the research, the researchers concluded with the results that, that suggest that loving relationships may act as a buffer against stress responses. So if you're looking for a quick way to lower your blood pressure, just close your eyes and think of a loved one. Now, speaking of a rise in blood pressure, let's talk about these people who are in the synagogue with Jesus that Sabbath day. The scene continues last week's story of Jesus beginning his ministry. Fresh from the lonely desert with dirt and dust still under his fingernails, Jesus came home to teach, home from the wilderness to a place and a people who raised him. His work would begin here in Nazareth. From the seat in his childhood Sabbath meeting house, a place where he studied as a boy, he reads the old, the old promise that God gave to Isaiah about the coming of a new way a great promise of liberation to all in need, good news to the poor and freedom to the captives and and sight to the blind and liberty to the oppressed. Jesus spoke about this new way with, with power and in his mouth and in his heart, pouring out as freely as the wine did at the wedding at Cana. Then he says, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing right here, right now. I am the one. And the people were fixated on him. They were amazed. They spoke well of him. The one for whom generations had been waiting was in their midst. Joseph's boy was now God's anointed. Eyes and hearts were opened. It was a high moment. It was a liberosis moment. No more glancing behind you every few steps. Every few steps, Life could could be held loosely and playfully because God has finally arrived. I'm even willing to bet that some some blood pressures lowered in that time. Until, that is, it became a very low moment. And any and all sense of liberosis just went out the door. What happened validates how fickle people can be, and how quickly blood pressures can rise. Jesus kept teaching and sternly reminds them of stories of their past where God is found reaching out to those beyond the safe boundaries of their synagogues, their homes, their towns, their faith. Stories of the other being given new life. Jesus continued to shatter their perspectives on how wide the restorative wingspan of God is, that it goes far, far beyond their own bloodline. And this was just too much for them to bear and not what they wanted to hear. And it filled them with unbridled rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of town, led him to the edge of the top of the hill, on which the city was built, and they were preparing to hurl him off the cliff. Now, in case you missed that or fell asleep, they tried to throw him off a cliff. He literally just began his ministry, and they were amazed by him, and just like that, they wanted to kill him. That's the complete opposite of liberosis. That's called holding on way too tightly, which means you're actually being held down. Yet in the midst of all this sudden chaos and rage surrounding him, Jesus somehow passed through their midst and went on his way. The politics of Jesus hit these people square in the face that day. Love your enemies, serve the poor, welcome the stranger, 
do justice and love mercy, care for God's people, which now happens to be everyone. You see this image on the screens? All the lines that people had been drawing, Jesus was in fact erasing. They were amazed at his message of grace. Their amazement, however, quickly turns to doubt. And then, and when doubt gets a hold of us, we start drawing lines. But Jesus just keeps erasing them. The God that Jesus was talking about that day was healing and including all the wrong people. The great New Testament scholar N.T. Wright offers some very helpful commentary here. He says, that's like someone in Britain or France during the Second World War speaking of God's healing and restoration for Adolf Hitler. It's not what people wanted to hear. I'm really hoping it snows this week because I've learned, I've been reminded how Snow is kind of like God's reminder of how grace was designed to look like. It doesn't pick and choose where it falls. It covers everything. And so I guess we don't get to condemn our favorite enemies anymore, is what Jesus is saying. And you know, all, you know those all-inclusive resorts maybe some of you have been to? You get your lodging and three meals a day and drinks and, and maybe some other activities all thrown in for one set price, and you don't have to worry about a thing as you're sitting there throughout the week by the beach or by the pool. This grace that Jesus throws down in the synagogue is all-inclusive. All-inclusive. And so in one of the greatest moments of liberosis in Jesus' life, he shows us what it looks like to loosen our grip and to let go of the things that are holding us down and which make our, makes our blood pressure rise as well. You see, at least in this instance, Jesus cares very little about what others think of him. Jesus understood who he was and whose he was and how to live out his belovedness. And if this start to his ministry is any indication, following Jesus may just lead us right into conflict. The more we follow Jesus and the more we are formed in the ways of Jesus, the more criticism will come. But the more we follow Jesus, the more we know our own belovedness. And so the less we care about what other people think. Jesus proclaimed a grace that was wider and more generous than they were in that synagogue and that we usually are as well. But thankfully, my friends, God is in charge of grace. We just get to respond and keep erasing lines. And that, that is liberosis at its best. Amen.